So what I have here is um, some information about the um, number of cars being made in the UK. And this is um, separated into three seasons, so four months per season. So January to April is your first season. May to August is your second season. September to December is your third season. And this is for 2003. And this, again, repeats for 2004 and 2005. Now, we can see the number of cars being made to the nearest 10,000. It's here. And here I've got a three-point moving average. Now, the reason why they may have chosen three-point moving average is because there are three seasons in the year and they want to um, sort of match that up with the moving average. So if we had uh, this information given to us quarterly, so with four seasons, one to four here, January to March here, and then every three months from there, then we might have chosen to do a four-point moving average. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete uh, the moving, uh, the three-point moving averages for these last two sections, and I'm going to show you how we get that. So this first value here, uh, 55.3, you will get that value if you find the mean, the, the arithmetic mean for these three values. So 57, 53, and 56. Add them up and divide it by three. You should get 55.3. And notice 55.3 is sort of matched up to the middle of the three values there. Okay, And then this 55.7 would have come from 53, 56, and 58. Add them up, divide by 3, you will get that value. To find this one, you would do 56, 58, 52. Add them up, divide by 3, you should get this one. So to find this blank one here, what I would need to do is I will need to add 55, 57, and 50, and then divide that by 3. So I'm going to do that now. So 55, add 57, add uh, 50 and divide that by 3 that gives me 54 okay so I can say that the, uh, the three-point moving average for this position here is 54 the next one and the last one would be 57 50 and 52 I will add them up so 57 add 50 add 52 and then divide that by 3 I get 53 Okay, so 53 will go there. Now, there isn't one here because to get this value, I would need to add 50, 52, and the next value to get this one. And to get this one here, we would need to have 53, 57, and the previous value to get this one. Okay, so notice that that's why those ones are not there. Now, what we can do with the moving average is we can plot these along here. Now, the way we're going to plot it is in this axis here, we're going to be looking for the middle position of the three values that we took. So this is going to be season two of 2003. So season two of 2003, and I will need to go up to 55.3. So I will mark that down, 55.3. Okay, so that's approximately here. Um, next one would be, so this one here, would be plotted with, because it was these three values, okay, so I can see this is the middle value that I used to get this three-point moving average, and this is season three of 2003. So I'm gonna go to season three of 2003, so that's here, and I'm gonna go all up to 55.7. So let's plot that one as well. So 55.7, that's roughly here. The next one, so the third of these values, okay, so the middle value that I used to find this three-point moving average here is this 58 here, here, and that is first season of 2004. So first season of 2004 would be plotted with 55.3. So 55.3 is about here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and plot the rest of these values, okay, with the corresponding values that will go here. What you see here now is that I've plotted these points. Now, once you've plotted your uh, points for moving average, what you can do is you can draw a trend line roughly going through them. Okay, so you're not going to join them up, okay, but you want to draw a straight line approximately going through them, trying to get as many points on the line as possible and roughly the same number on each side. Okay, so I would say this, the trend line should roughly go through here, I would say. So I would draw the trend line and like that. Okay, notice again, when I did my trend line, 
I go through a point here, there's three above there and there's three below there. I could have maybe drawn it a little bit more uh, diagonal going here, okay, so look at, with a steeper gradient there. And um, also notice that I haven't gone past uh, season one of 2003 on this side. I don't want to extrapolate on that side. And I end it here. Okay, so a straight line roughly through the points, okay, and with roughly the same number on both sides. Okay, so that is a trend line that you can draw using the moving averages. Okay, now final thing to say is that you could e either look at these values and notice that the values tend to be going down, so 55.3, then 55.7, and then you see it goes down and it continues to go down. So those once when it went up, and then the rest of them, you can see it's going down. So looking at these values, you can say something about the trend. So you can say that it's a decreasing trend. You can see that the moving averages are going down. And also, once you've plotted it on a graph, okay, you can see the decreasing trend. And of course, you're going to, you're going to draw your trend line with a negative gradient there. So here are two questions for you to try. So in this first one, you've got a lot of four-point moving averages uh, done for you, and you have to find the last two. In this second one, I would like you to copy this table and find the four, uh, um, add a new column for four-point moving averages and find all the moving averages for this one. Um, one thing I should also mention is that notice that this is a four-point moving average and also notice that this 85 is in between these two rows here, okay? So it was the 40, 95, 140, and 65 added up, divided by four, gave 85. So this 85, 85 is placed in between the two and the three because if there's four here, the middle of that would be between the two and the three. So notice that that's how this column is done. Please draw it like that for this one.